more of the transcript from Bin Laden. If we actually want to figure out why 9-11 happened, why does the world hate us? They ain't jealous of our freedoms. It's stupid. If you believe that, you're stupid. Okay? They hate us because we've been killing them. Uh, Bin Laden so far has talked about 1982 when America attacked Lebanon. Ronald Reagan attacked Lebanon, sending the Marines, and there's a lot of bloodshed. Lots of innocent, you know, people, women, children were dying, and there's lots of blood. So the Muslim world does, does not forget about the terrorist atrocities that America has put upon them. Not Let's not forget about Iraq. But Bush Sr. was starving the children in Iraq, starved millions of the kids because of the economic sanctions. And then they went in there and they've killed at least a million uh, people, civilians, right now. Uh, America, uh, I guess our government, my government has killed innocent uh, uh, Iraqi children, okay? So the Muslim world remembers this. They remember the 1982 bombing in Lebanon. They remember the U.S.-Israeli coalition. They understand that the United States protects Israel at all of its cost, no matter what Israel does, whether they do it justified, whether they aren't justified. As soon as Obama was elected, Israel is just slaughtering people in the Gaza war. They were afraid that a black president was elected and black people and Jews don't get along. So Jews said, you know what, we're going to put Obama in this place and we're going to just start killing a bunch of people. And he's just going to accept it. He's going to have to lean back and just accept it. And that's exactly what he did. He couldn't, uh, he just got into office. He couldn't, you know, start pointing his guns against Israel right in the very get-go, right? Politically, that probably would have been devastating for him in this country since this country is so uh, pro-Israel. At least the established elites are, and APAC is. But there's a lot of Jewish people that are, doesn't like the aggression and doesn't like the uh, version of Judaism that Israel gives to, to the rest of the world. They should be peaceful neighbors they should give Palestine its own um, its own country so um, so the the policy of the White House that demands the opening of war fronts well those are the things he mentioned the um, the Patriot Act he mentioned to how Bush stole the elections and he also mentioned the Mujahideen how bin Laden had fought uh, against the Russians and he bled Russia to death until it collapsed in the Afghan trap so there's lots of bloodshed that the Middle East folks remember. The U.S.-Israeli coalition, the murders in Palestine and Lebanon, 1982, Lebanon, um, and all the Iraqi children dying. So, just to name a few things that Bin Laden was mentioning, uh, his reasons. Um, and he's actually taking credit in uh, for the 9-11 attacks in, in this transcript here. So... Um, rather the policy of the White House that demands the opening of the war fronts to keep busy their various corporations, whether they be working in the same arms or oil reconstruction, has helped Al-Qaeda to achieve these enormous results. So America has helped Al-Qaeda. And so it has appeared to some analysts and diplomats that the White House and us are playing as one team towards the economic goals of the United States, even if the intentions differ. And it was to these sorts of notions and their like that the British diplomat and others were referring in their lectures at the Royal Institute of International Affairs when they pointed out that, for example, Al-Qaeda spent $500,000 on the event while America and the incident and its aftermath lost, according to the lowest estimate, more than $500 billion. America lost $500 billion. Meaning that every dollar of Al-Qaeda defeated a million dollars by the permission of Allah besides the loss of a huge number of jobs. As for the size of the economic deficit, it has reached record astronomical numbers estimating to total more than a trillion dollars. So this is 2004. He's he's happy about the deficit bloating up and so in a way, you know, if we were listening to Bin Laden and we cut back the military budget, we would have saved money and probably prevented the collapse of the economy. The war in the military is killing our economy. We get nothing for it. We, there's no return. It's a bad business deal. We spend trillions of dollars and we get nothing for it. Why, well, the empire doesn't help the working class. All we're doing is creating more terrorists. That's all the war is doing. That's all our empire is doing is creating more terrorists. People don't like to be oppressed. You give them freedom, and if they, you know, if it goes past that, then if they're violent, then you can do something. But if if they're free, then they, you know they can't be violent. The Roman Empire used to make everybody a citizen of their country. That's how they kept people from rebelling against them. So maybe we should just make everybody who wants to be a citizen of America an American citizen. If the if the uh, country votes for it, just like they voted to become part of the Union um, in, in the beginning, you know, with the first 50 states. 
You also got Guam and Puerto Rico. How come they, they're not included in the 50 states? So, Bin Laden. Okay, so, it is true that this shows that Al-Qaeda has gained, but on the other hand, it shows that the Bush administration has also gained. Something of which anyone who looks at the size of the contracts acquired by the shady Bush administration-linked mega corporations like Halliburton and its kind will be convinced. And it all shows that the real loser is you. The American people it is the American people and their economy. And for the record, we had agreed with the commander, General Muhammad Atta. Allah, have mercy on him and that all the operations should be carried out within 20 minutes before Bush and his administration's notice. It never occurred to us that the commander in chief of the American Armed Forces would abandon 50,000 of his citizens in the Twin Towers to face those great horrors alone, the time when they most needed him. But because it seemed to him that occupying himself by talking to the little girl about the goat and its budding was more important than him occupying himself with the planes and their budding of the skyscrapers. They were given three times the period required to execute the operations. All praise is due Allah. So Bush had more time to... Uh, uh, the 9-11 the hijackers were given more time because of Bush's slow response. It's no secret to you that the thinkers and perceptive ones from among the Americans warned Bush before the war and told him, All that you want for securing America and removing the weapons of mass destruction, assuming they exist, is available to you. And the, nation, the nations of the world are with you in the inspections, and it is in the interest of America that it not be thrust into an unjustified war with an unknown outcome. But the darkness of the black gold blurred her, his vision and insight, and he gave priority to private interest over the public interest of America. So the war went ahead. The death toll rose. The American economy bled, and Bush became embroiled in the swamps of Iraq that threatened his future. He fits the saying like the naughty she-goat who used her hoof to dig up a knife from under the earth. So I say to you, over 15,000 of our people have been killed and tens of thousands injured. While more than a thousand of you have been killed and more than 10,000 injured. And Bush's hands are stained with the blood of all those killed from both sides. All for the sake of oil and keeping their private companies in business. But aware, be aware that it is the nation who punishes the weak man when he causes the killing of one of its citizens for money. While letting the powerful one get off when he causes the killing of more a thousand of its sons also for money. The same goes for your allies in Palestine. They terrorize the women and children and kill and capture the men as they lie sleeping with their families on the mattresses. That you may recall that for every action there is a reaction. Finally, it behooves you to reflect on the last wills and testaments of the thousands who left you on the 11th as they gestured in despair. They are important testaments which should be studied and researched. Among the most of what I read in them was some prose in their gestures before the collapse where they say how mistaken we were to have allowed the White House to implement its aggressive foreign policies against the weak without supervision. It is as if they were telling you that people of America hold to account those who have caused us to be killed, and happy is he who learns from others' mistakes. And among that which I read in their gestures is a verse of poetry, Injustice chases its people, and how unhealthy the bed of tyranny. As has been said, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. And know that it is better to return to the truth than persist in error. And that the wise man doesn't squander his security, wealth, and children for the sake of the liar in the White House. In conclusion, I tell you in truth that your security is not in the hands of Kerry, nor Bush, nor Al-Qaeda. No, your security is in your own hands. And every state that doesn't play with our security has automatically guaranteed its own security. And Allah is our guardian and helper. While you have no guardian or helper, all peace be on upon he who follows the guidance. Uh, more Bin Laden speech. 11.104. So this is right before the election. Praise be to Allah who created the creation for his worship and commanded them to be just and permitted the wrong one to retaliate against the oppressor and kind. To proceed, peace be upon he who follows the guidance. People of America, this talk of mine is for you and concerns the ideal way to prevent another Manhattan. It deals with the war and its results and causes. Why don't we strike Sweden? Yeah, this is very similar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so those, that's the same speech that came right out before the election. And I remember Fox News was saying how Al-Qaeda and the Democrats both wanted Bush to lose. That's why he was putting out the video so close to the election day. 
So that's that's Bin Laden. Bin Laden's pissed off at America because of us attacking Lebanon, because we're an empire, because of what we're doing to Palestine, because we keep invading Muslim countries at will whenever we feel like it, and they don't. We, the people of America, tend to not give a shit what the fuck our military is doing. We're not paying attention. We're not seeing what's going on. And so while we, the people, don't see what's going on, when your brother, your sister, your mother, or your father, somebody in your family has died because of American guns, that's something you'll never fucking forget. We did that shit in the 80s in Latin America. We did that shit. We've been doing this shit everywhere. We got 120 military bases. We're in Yemen. We're in Somalia. CIA has got its tentacles spread out everywhere. NSA has got all of our names and numbers and information and uh, email transactions. So we're, we're being censored. This is... We're being censored. Um, but uh, when Bin Laden talks about the atrocities that America has uh, has done, people, the Muslim people, do not agree with Bin Laden. But they do understand what he's talking about. They do understand the Lebanon. In the 1980s, Ronald Reagan was attacking Central America. He killed Oscar Romero, the priest, in El Salvador, right in the middle of a sermon because a priest was standing up for democracy against the dictatorship, against the military junta. Um, Ronald Reagan sent Marines into Lebanon, killed a lot of innocent people, children, and the Muslim, the Arab world remembers this. They remember this shit. How can you not remember that if you've been bombed? Would you remember if your family was bombed and killed? If you would remember, then how can you expect anybody else to forget? Israel's been doing what the fuck they please. America was shut down as an international terrorist because of the shit we were doing in Latin America. But we've also been defending the terrorists in the Middle East for the last, I guess, 1948 since Israel started. Israel has only been around for 50, 60 years. So they've only been around a couple decades. We're going to defend. America's going to defend this little country out in the Arab world uh, to the detriment of our own people. That, that's what we're doing. We're killing innocent people just to defend Israel's right to murder and kill whoever the fuck they want to. The Palestinian war. Cynthia McKinney tried to break the blockade with food. The Israel, Israeli troops are jumping down on boats that have food for the Palestinians. That's what we're defending. We're defending... I mean, Israel is, gives a safe haven for Jewish people. And yeah, the Jewish people need a safe haven. That's true. I agree. But why there in Jerusalem? Why were you uprooting people there? That mimics America's beginnings. We wiped out the Native Americans and then took over the land. Israel's wiping out the Arab people and taking the land. There is no Jewish people there. Not like it is now. They took it over. Those people were living there forever. The Palestinians were living there in that country forever. And we still killing them. We still taking bulldozers and killing them. And we're running over... Rachel Corey, white girl, who stood in front of the bulldozer, and they didn't give a shit, Caterpillar. The bulldozer Caterpillar, they didn't give a fuck. They drove right over that white girl. You're going to stand in front of us? We got progress to maintain. You're going to die. Killed her. Ran right over her. That's how Israel is. Israel is not a good country. You're not a good country, Israel. You're the Nazis now. You used to be the oppressed, and now you're the oppressors. You're the Nazis, and you're making America look bad. I, used to, I heard that America actually was in Iraq and Iran because of Israel. So the entire nation of America is pointing our guns in the Middle East to defend Israel. What, how does that help me? That don't help me at all. Empire does not help the working class. Empire does not help me. It doesn't help anybody. We're only creating more terrorism. You're not saving me. You're not fighting for freedom and democracy anywhere. You're not fighting for freedom and democracy there. You're not fighting for freedom and democracy here. We don't even have freedom and democracy here. How can you be fighting it for it there? So, yeah, that's, um, when Bin Laden talks about the bad shit, especially, you know, I mean, he mentioned the Patriot Act and shit, but, like, Russia, like, that's, we're, 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 we're Russia. The Soviet Union was dissolved in 1990, 91. Berlin Wall came down, and all the countries in the USSR went uh, broke away from the central government, and it dissolved. So there was no money left in the USSR's treasury because of the Afghanistan war. And what's taking our treasury right now? The war. The wars. The many, many wars. The empire wars specifically, but class war and drug wars too. 
There's militarism everywhere. It's not fascist? Maybe not. I'm allowed to say shit on YouTube. Let's see if I'm allowed to say shit out in real life. Let's see if I'm allowed to give public speeches. I'm allowed to say what I want to say out in public. Sound of revolt, Louisville.